Well, President Obama and Republicans in Congress are trying to be gracious toward each other. An ideological battle has broken out between the president and conservative radio host Rush Limbaugh. Democrats have launched an online petition in response to Rush Limbaugh's comments that he hopes Obama will fail in his presidency. We want to promote failure. We want, we want to promote incompetence. We want to stand by and not object to what he's doing simply because of the color of his skin. Sorry, I got past the historical nature of this months ago. President Obama told congressional leaders at the White House on Friday that, quote, you can't just listen to Rush Limbaugh and get things done. After a glib comment by White House Press Secretary Robert Gibbs, Limbaugh suggested that Mr. Obama is more frightened of him than he is of Republican leaders, saying, quote, which doesn't say much about our party. What is unfair about my saying I hope liberalism fails? Liberalism is our problem. Liberalism is what's gotten us dangerously close to the precipice here. Why do I want more of it? And we are joined by conservative columnist Ann Coulter, author of Guilty Liberal Victims and Their Assault on America. So this conversation is going on. It's very interesting because if you take things out of context, I think if you listen to what Rush, Rush Limbaugh said, I want him to fail, he wants big government to fail. Right. He wants certain things that are especially involved in this stimulus package to fail. I don't think he's sitting there saying, as an American citizen, I want the presidency of the country to fail. Right. He wants these things to fail. Do I have that right? That's exactly right. In fact, I put it sort of the reverse way. I said, yes, of course, I want him to succeed, but that means he'll govern as a conservative. Um, so what do you I think sort of, of admire him? Rush's verve for switching it around that oh, way. Oh, <laughs> you admire that he put it that way? Don't you think it's a little bit irresponsible him to put it that way? I mean, the way you put it seems... Much. It's basically the same thing. His makes me laugh more. <laughs> <laughs> so you like that one. But, but it, don't you think that right now it is not, it behooves the Republicans to be a little bit more in the middle? I mean, what are they, they're not, their voices aren't going to be heard anyway, as we saw with this economic stimulus plan. Even if they want something, if the Democrats want something else, that's what's going to happen. So doesn't it behoove them to be more bipartisan and meet in the middle? I think it's just the reverse. I mean, we just ran John McCain. We are so sick of being in the middle. <laughs> and the other thing is, when you govern, you do have to, um, Republicans had to accede to demands of their president, George Bush, like the huge prescription drug program. Um, they weren't very happy with the amnesty bill. So, you know, we've already, or they, as politicians, have had to compromise and engage in horse trading. Now we can be principled. But how are they going to have a voice? Well, I think they in will have a voice. I mean, they, they already got, it's a tiny little piece of the bill, but they did get the, the birth control or the family planning plan. I bet you the SDT programs are going to be cut soon, too. And the main thing is that, that, that we go back to being the party of ideas and we stand for something and people, you know, we can make the principled arguments. Now, I say we, I'm not a politician, but I, I feel sorry for Republican politicians having to be compromising for the past eight How years. How interesting is it, though, that there's a guy on the radio who has an audience of some millions of people. You have one Republican congressman who said, well, it's easy for Sean Hannity, it's easy for Rush Limbaugh to throw stones. It's harder if you're in the Congress. He goes back on his hands and knees <laughs> and apologizes a day later for us, please forgive me, I knew not what I was doing. This is crazy. I mean, that, that's, that's, the, that's the voice that's, that's the, the conscious, right? Well, I think... Um, I mean, we do have different roles, conservative spokespeople and politicians. Like I say, politicians, you know, they do have to be diplomatic. I wouldn't want to be a politician. Rush Limbaugh wouldn't be a politician. Well, that's my question to you. Like, if you feel so passionately about your beliefs and you make good money through your books, why don't you run for office and try and spark change that it's way? It's a very different job, and I wouldn't like it, and I don't think I'd be good at it. I mean, just to take two examples from, from President Bush. Um, immediately after the attack of 9-11, Bush is all over saying Islam is a religion of peace. He's inviting all these Muslims over for Ramadan. It's all, he's, he's attending, you know, mosques. Um, I didn't have to do that. When they have the unveiling of the, of the um, Clinton presidential portrait, Bush has to say nice things about Bill Clinton. I didn't you couldn't have to do that. that. You couldn't I couldn't do, do that. that. But I understand why a president has to, and you, that is what a politician does. So we do have different roles. And actually, I think it was kind of dopey for the congressman not to realize that and to bother making that point. But the strangest thing is having the president attack. Rush Limbaugh. Let me ask you something. If this economic stimulus plan works like Nancy Pelosi and President Obama think it will, will you eat humble pie? Will you say I was wrong and, and they were right? Well, 
There's no way it could Probably work. not. Uh, <laughs> no, it's my would, question, but it though. never it, works. It's not going to work might this, this time. But you might said this you would if it does. Should, well, uh, we're going to be out of the recession by the end of the year if the government does nothing. I think this is going to delay it. It's a little hard to, to prove that, but big government... It doesn't work in Cuba. It hasn't worked any place. It's not going to work. <laughs> here's, here's my contention. I think that maybe Republicans, by the, they're, they're being put in, they, by, them, by their own acts and by what's happened in the election, this is their time in the wilderness. And perhaps this is where they actually find out who they are as opposed to what they've been over the last 10 years or so. Yeah, I mean, I think we have a pretty good idea of what that is. But, but like I say, now you don't have to make compromises. Now you don't have to build majorities. You can go back to first principles. And, I mean, as Reagan showed, that is popular with Americans. Yeah. In the final seconds, what is your role then? You say we all have roles. What's your role? Um, gin up the troops, prepare the <laughs> troops for battle. <laughs> and gear up for President Palin, right, in your ideal world? Perhaps. <laughs> all right. And Coulter, thanks for stopping Thank you. By.